We're talking about how to use AI to help you code. Now, a quick caveat, you still have to learn how to code because it's the best way to get the best out of the AI. You can't ask it just to do everything for you. It's not gonna get it quite right or you're not gonna engage with it in the best way. So it's not an excuse not to learn code. You still have to, you still have to learn code, but let's learn how to use AI in the best possible way to get the best out of our coding. Does that make sense? If it does, stick with me. Let's do this. Boom shakalaka. On this YouTube channel, we're creating our programming videos on everything. Right, this is a part of a series of videos. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to just use your web page, you know, web browser to engage with Gemini, Claude, and ChatGPT to generate code, their strengths and weaknesses of each of them. I'm gonna go through that just so that you know the other ways that you can use AI to help you with your coding, and I'm not gonna do that in this video. I've got other videos on that is, number one, you can use the GitHub Copilot, and that it's built into R Studio, okay? And uh, it's a little bit of a hop, skip, and a jump to set it up. And what it does is it'll auto-complete code. So as you start writing code, it'll kind of suggest uh, the rest of a chunk of code for you. Some people like it, some people hate it. I don't particularly like it, but I will make a video on how to do all of that. The other way that, the other thing you can do is you can install packages like Chat R. That'll create a little chat box inside R Studio, and you can use that very quite similar to the way that you could put any prompt into a web page. You can ask it questions not just about to generate code, but questions about code, or you can ask it anything you want. Um, at this point in time, a little bit slow and clumsy, I still prefer to use the web page itself because you can do more. But let's talk about how to do that. And let's talk about these three models. There's lots of other models you can use and you can play around with them. But I'm gonna talk about the strengths and the weaknesses of the three that we're gonna look at today. Okay, so let's dive right in. Stick with me, don't ever change, don't do drugs. This is easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So before you start asking your language model to provide code or give you a data analysis strategy or having any of that kind of conversation, it needs to know what data it is you're looking at. Now, if it's a small data set and it's an Excel spreadsheet, you can just drop that straight into ChatGPT or Claude and it'll have the data and boom, shark like it. There you go. Quite often it's a larger data set and you don't necessarily want it to do the analysis for you. You want it to talk about how to create the code. How do you tell your language model about your data set so that it knows exactly what you're dealing with without necessarily needing to see all the data? Well, that's easy to do. What you can, and I'm gonna show you a little bit of that right here, right? So we all, you've probably used the Irish data set built into R, comes with Tidyverse. If you ask for a summary, so if we say summary, Iris, it's gonna give you um, a little bit of information about each variable and you can just cut and paste this. You just cut and paste all of this into and paste it straight into Claude or Gemini or, and it will know then a lot about the data set and it can start giving you advice or even generating code as to how to summarize that or how to analyze it. Now, here's the problem. In this particular case, we've got a, and this is why summary is quite good by the way. If there's a numeric variable, easy peasy, it, it gives you the sort of um, uh, parameters of that of the numeric variable. If there's a, a categorical variable or a factor, it will also tell you what the factors are and that's useful right? Um, so that this is a, a good first step. You can also um, ask for the structure of the data set. So if I do strmt cards, for example, and this is also useful, it tell, you know, when you cut and paste this into R, it's telling it this is a numeric variable, blah, 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 blah. But, and I, I use this as well sometimes, but here's a small caveat. In this data set, uh, carburetors, carb over here, it's down as a numeric variable. Now, when we do our analysis, we're probably gonna change that to a factor. We may or may not. You don't always need to, but we may want to. We don't know from this little summary that's, got, that's come here from the structure, we don't know what all the possible values of the factors are, right? And if that's the case, you can do unique empty cars uh, dollar sign carb, and it will then say, the, you know, the unique values for this particular variable are those. And so what I would do under these circumstances is I'd take any of these variables that are currently down as a numeric, or it, could be a, it could, might be a text and a uh, string variable, where we think that there are certain unique values that apply to it, so we can think of it as a factor, and I'd ask for the unique values and cut and paste those into your, uh, into your prompt uh, in, on the web page as well, so that your large language model knows as much about the data set as possible before we, before we do anything else. Got it? Okay, of course you do, let's keep going. I'm gonna have a look at Gemini and Claude and ChatGPT and look at, and each of them have got certain strengths and we'll talk about that. Here's a prompt that I might've started with, right? I've said, 
Um, here is the structure of a data set that I want to analyze. I want you to make suggestions about what kind of analysis or data visualization I might be able to do with this data, provide some explanatory notes as to how best to approach this data set. And then I've pasted in that summary that I got from RSGDO. So it's summarized IRIS and it's provided all of this information. So Gemini now has a lot of information about the structure of the data set and it can get going and start thinking about it and start tuning out results. Now, you'll notice I didn't just ask it to provide me with code. I think that that's a mistake. You wanna build up to getting the code itself I think the best use case of these language models is to have a conversation with the language model about your data set. Ask it, what is the best approach here? What is the best practice with respect to cleaning this data, manipulating it? What kind of data visualization do you suggest? It'll come up with a number of recommendations for you to think about and choose from, and then you can lean in and focus on the ones that you think are most appropriate. And so that this is why I think this approach is better than using the autocomplete uh, that comes with the GitHub. And I think it's better than the little chat box that you can have in our studio. You can have a much more detailed conversation before you start actually generating code itself. Um, so this is what it's done. And it said suggested data analysis, and you can read through this. I'm not gonna do that in this video, uh, but it gives all sorts of suggestions about data visualization, et cetera, et cetera. So you read through that and it'll give you, and, and you'll really have a good sense of what to do next. And then after all of this, I said to it, provide me with R code to create a density plot. And then it did that. Here's the code that it provided and then some explanatory notes. So that's quite good. And I like Gemini. And, and so the strength of Gemini is that it's quick. It'll give you something quite fast and it's usually reasonably good. Um, and so I use it every now and again. Now this is Claude. Claude is my favorite for generating really good code. It produces code with very few errors. Uh, when you cut and paste it into RStudio, nine times out of 10, it does what you think it needs to do, what it's supposed to do. It uh, will give, if you, if you get an error and you cut and paste the error in here, it'll give you a good explanatory note as to how to fix it. Claude is excellent. So, and, and you know, so basically I've, I've asked it to write some code um, and uh, similarly, a density plot for the Iris data set. It's given me an, a number of options, which is nice. Um, in any of these cases, you can just push copy there, paste that into RStudio and run it. So that's pretty e easy to do. Now, here's, and, and, and you can ask Claude to do quite complicated stuff, by the way. You can ask it to create like a Quarto page, um, you know, like which will be a web page with all sorts of fancy uh, bells and whistles, and it'll produce a document that is downloadable and you can open that document up and it'll open in RStudio as a Quarto document. Really good and very impressive. So love Claude. Here's the downside, right? Claude quite quickly will run out of tokens. In other words, the number of uh, prompts and information that you can stick into Claude and the number of outputs that it'll provide in any given period of time. So you might be in the middle of quite a big important project and you're halfway through generating the code and you hit a snag and you need to do the next step and Claude sort of says, hang on, hold the phone. You've used up your allocation for the day, come back tomorrow. And that is unbelievably frustrating. So one, it produces, I think the best results that that limitation will drive you bonkers if you are involved with a big project. If you're doing something short and quick, Claude is a hundred times uh, every day of the week the best place to go. All right, let's talk now about ChatGPT. Now for ChatGPT, I popped in the same prompt. I've said, um, uh, write some code for creating a density plot using the Irish data set. It similarly gave me more than one option. So it did an option in base R and in uh, using the tidyverse. So I like that you can cut and paste, the, you can just push copy, paste the code straight into RStudio. And of course it works easy peasy, lemon squeezy. It's also good at managing errors. So if you've write, written some code and you get an error message, um, you can cut and paste the error message back in, back into as a prompt and it, it will provide a solution, which is usually pretty good. So good for that double thumbs up. It also doesn't run out of tokens in the way that Claude does. So you can keep working on quite big projects. You can drop quite big documents and data sets into it and it, and it handles all of that quite well. Now, I, I don't think it's as good at coding as Claude, but you know, we are now on ChatGPT5, it's, it's pretty good. Um, you know, I, like who am I to say? The thing about ChatGPT that I like is, uh, here I said, put option one onto a canvas for me. Then on the right hand side, it created this canvas, which has got the code from option one. And then you can sit and make changes on the canvas if you want. Like, let's say I wanted to change uh, this density to um, something else or whatever. Doesn't matter. You can, you can make changes on the canvas. But the other nice thing is that you can highlight a section of text and it says, ask ChatGPT. So I could say, um, 
please explain this. Please explain this code. And then it would provide an explanatory note. Or I could say, um, change the theme. And it will then think about what I've just sort of said uh, and we'll give it a few minutes and it'll come back and it'll have made some sort of change to the to what's on the canvas and then you cut and paste that. Now in this case, I've asked it just to change the theme and that's kind of a small thing. It's taking a little bit of time to get this right. I think that's a function of the fact that I've got this terribly slow internet. There it goes and it's changed it to theme black and white. Now that's just one little line that I'm changing but you could actually ask it to make substantial changes to a large bit of code. It would go through all of that code, make all the changes and you'd suddenly have something new and interesting to look at. I like that a lot. This is a great way to work with your code until you've got something that you think is exactly what you're looking for. And then you cut and paste that into RStudio. The other thing that I do is sometimes I cut and paste it into RStudio, I run it. And at that point I discover that what it's, what it's generated, what it's produced isn't quite what I want. Maybe the colors aren't right or it's done something in a way that I, I'm not entirely happy with. And sometimes the fix isn't that simple or straightforward or I might not know how to fix it. I go back to the canvas and I ask R to make the change or the fix on the canvas. Or I cut and paste an error message that I received in R Studio into ChatGPT and I say, you know, the code churned out this particular error and it will then change what's on the canvas uh, in response to what I've put into the prompt and then you cut and paste that back into our studio and boom shaka lucky you've usually got what you want. So that this to me is a better way to use a language model to help you with your code than the than the GitHub uh, Copilot and then apps like uh, Chat R. In my opinion, some people might differ. And of the three and many more language models that you can use, but of the three that I showed you now, my favorite is Claude. I think it produces the best code, but working on a bigger project, ChatGPT is definitely the way to go. I hope this was useful. I'm gonna have um, a link on the screen that you can click on and go to some of the other videos or the playlist that I've got going for this. I uh, hope to see you again here soon. Don't have a change, don't do drugs, always do your best. Boom shakalaka.